Hey, it's your boy Sergeant Hooked on Heroes. Um, we are talking about today Common Rider Geats episode four. Before we jump into it, a few little updates. Um, I am now officially a Tokusatsu journalist. I never thought I'd ever put those two awesome things together. I went to school for journalism, if you don't know. Uh, but uh, I'm working with uh, Superhero Time. It's a, a news network website put together by Squall Charleston and a lot of uh, really awesome people on Toku Twitter. Um, and uh, yeah, we're writing um, reviews of the episodes, news you know, leaks and stuff that have come out and all that kind of stuff. So uh, check it out there. Um, right now, the only thing I have up, because I just started, is a mini review for episode four of Geats. Um, if you want to check that out, um, feel free. Um, but yeah, just want to let you guys know. Um, pretty soon will be my episode 30 review of Don Brothers will be on there as a written form. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there as far as content is concerned. So yeah, we are talking about Comrade Geats episode four. Um, another pretty solid episode, I will say. Um, I think I, I really like it um, that uh, at least right in this moment, we seem to be returning to... Uh, the two episode arc type format. Um, I always really liked that format, honestly, and I kind of got a little sad when they kind of dropped that in subsequent seasons. I mean, not completely. They didn't drop it completely, but I mean, like, kind of. Like, not every season has done it. Um, but it's nice to see it make a return, and I think it works for this type of a show. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, and again, we're doing another uh, on the road review, as it were. Um, but, uh, yeah, episode's really good, so we start off, it's mainly a focus on Nago, which I really like that, but it's also slightly a focus on the new trio we're putting together here of her, Keiwa, and, um, Ace. So, uh, Nago is our Neon, is her, you know, normal name, uh, is kind of, uh, upset and feeling a lot of really, like, nihilistic about the whole thing of becoming a zombie, right? She doesn't want to turn, and she feels it, you know, getting stronger, the infection, and, you know, she doesn't want to turn, you know? And she says that, you know, as much as I hate being home and I always try and escape, right now I kind of wish that, you know, I was home, honestly. Um, and we get a lot more insight into her backstory. So, um, at one point she gets, uh, the, I think it's, uh, is it Buffa? I'm pretty sure Buffa um, takes her hostage and ties her up. And the other riders are there. So Mary's there, um, uh, Tycoon, Geats, and uh, I don't, I think Dapon's there, but he's tied up. So uh, they're talking to everybody. And um, saying how she's a threat and they need to keep her tied up, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, well, you know, honestly, I kind of agree with that. Like, at this point, it's possible I could turn at any time and, you know, take other people out. I don't want that to happen. Um, and I do like this way about her that she does definitely seems to be concerned about people. You know, it's interesting that her desire seems to be to find true love. When really, I think it's about finding, like, a, 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 like a, a, a new, like, found family through friends, basically. And the reason I say that is that when we get into her backstory stuff. So, her backstory is really kind of, like, messed up. So, Neon goes back home in between rounds. And, uh, because the next round's not going to start for a while. And they let them know when it is. And then they transport back and whatever. And so, she goes back home. And, um, she tries to leave again. And her mom's like, no, you will not. And actually, first thing she sees her, she slaps her right in the face. Slaps her and knocks her down. It's like, whoa, 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 abuse. And uh, tells her that, you know, how dare you leave, blah, 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 and you know what happened when you were younger. So it's revealed when Neon was younger, she's part of this Karama family. Neon Karama is her full name, right? Or Karama, Neon, whatever. It's this prominent rich family there in Japan. <clears throat> and apparently, uh, when she was young, probably like six or seven, something like that, she was kidnapped at one point and held for ransom. And so that is why her mom treats her the way that she does and wants to keep her basically locked away Rapunzel style. Um, and uh, she, like, is all abusive to her, and then she's like, but please don't leave me. I'll buy you whatever you want. And we get a quick shot to the wall of, like, a bunch of dolls. So clearly she's done that a lot, like, implying that throughout her life she's, like, tried to, like, dress up her abuse as, like, oh, but I'll get you anything you want. It won't be so bad. So, I kind of get Neon not wanting to be there. Like, her clearly her, her... I mean, we don't see her dad. I don't know what's, where the dad is. But her mom is clearly a psychopath. Uh, and so, uh, just after that, she does escape again. She leaves. She says, oh, I won't do it. But she does. And Kawa sees her. And she's like, oh, were you coming to check on me? He goes, yeah, I was. Making sure you were okay. And so, he brings Ace with her. Um, with him. And they all talk. And she's like, you know, I really... You know, I'm not sure what to do. You know, I want to be able to keep fighting and, you know, you know, being a part of the, of the Grand Prix, but I'm not sure what's going to happen. 
and uh, they both kind of pepper up quite a bit and I think that was really interesting because Ace seems to be the one that is a lot more on like the Tsukasa side of protagonists um, in terms of being kind of like cocky and like kind of I don't want to say pushy but just like um, more like abrasive I guess he's not nearly as blunt and abrasive as Buffa is but kind of you know and so even he helps her feel better a little bit too um, and later on when we get to the match she flashes back to that again and it shows her talking to Kayla Moore and she says that you know he's like besides my sister would be really sad if you died like she's a huge fan of yours you know um, and I would be too she goes really you're concerned about me as well he's like well yeah of course I would be really sad if you went and it flashes really quick and I love this to her um, her desire thing of finding true love so I wonder if it's possible that they're maybe doing like a romancy thing here. I don't know. I don't honestly know exactly how old she's supposed to be and also how old uh, Kawa is supposed to be. I think he's pretty young too. I, I want to say that she's maybe 18, 19. I don't know. Um, and Kawa's pretty young as well. So I would be okay with it. I think it would be kind of adorable, honestly. Um, but uh, Ace also reveals some good stuff too. So um, we'll get to that. So we get into the match. They're scoring their points and whatever. Um, everybody henchins and does their thing. And uh, Dapon had given uh, Magnum to Buffa. He didn't need it anymore. He just wanted to basically take down anyone he could. Uh, um, being a zombie, he doesn't care anymore. He's like, oh, I don't give a shit. I want to take down as many people as I can with it. And so he gives Magnum to Buffa. And it's funny because Buffa doesn't even use it to shoot, really. He uses the, like, you know, uh, like, fully extended out gun to just, like, he's using it physically to beat the zombies with <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was really funny that like it's not his like intended buckle he normally uses So he's using it the way he would use it, which is more of like a physical fighter whereas Gates is more of like the ranged fighter, right? And so Gates is using zombie again, but on the top half um, Everybody's scoring points. We see an interesting scene with Mary So Mary um, is running away from some of the zombies and you see some civilians He leads the zombies to them and runs away and they're like what what help us and he's like no and he like runs away and the zombies come up and he comes back and uh, basically it was just a ploy to uh, get more points because you get like double points when you save civilians. So it was only a ploy to get more points. So I, I like that we're revealing a few more layers about Mary that he's kind of a bit of an ass. Um, I don't know if he's definitely a psychopath necessarily, but I do see that he's like more on like the dickish side of things. I think he would probably be more on like um, the guy in Gaim that like was dealing the lock seeds or whatever, kind of like that guy where uh, he wasn't like completely and utterly a complete murderous psychopath, but he wasn't a good person either. So, um, anyway, so he gets a few points, whatever, um, and Nago's trying to do her best. She uses armed hammer, and uh, she comes in one of the fights and is fighting, is, is, is uh, you know, taking on the zombies there, and she pulls out boost and uses it. Now we get um, armed hammer boost for her, right? And it's kind of cool, because it's like, wait a minute, how did she get that? Because the last person we knew that had it was um, Kawa. And so the flashback, we go back to that, and I'll kind of talk to that about that now. Uh, Kawa gives her the boost buckle and says, I want you to use this. Please keep fighting. I know that it seems dire. I know it seems like, you know, uh, like there's no way, like there's just, it's just completely impossible. But keep hope. Use this and keep, you know, keep hopeful. And she eventually is convinced to keep fighting, right? And so, because uh, um, remember, the rule is whoever has the lowest point at the end of the round is eliminated. And so Ace reveals to her, well, I wonder if it's possible that uh, the um, zombie cure, the zombie plague could be cured, like the zombie infection could be cured. She goes, well, how? He's like, well, if you think about it, every time the game resets, um, the damage made by the um, Yamato, uh, me might hear a lot of rain right now, I apologize for that. Uh, the damage um, caused by the by the Yamato is reset every time the game resets, right? When they, when they you know, get through another round or whatever. And so, um, she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess it is. And um, so he says it's possible that if we can, uh, you know, hold out long enough to defeat the, the wave of zombies and get rid of them before you fully turn, then we might be able to, you know, reverse the infection once the game, you know, resets or whatever. And so that gives her more hope. And I like this, like, kind of, like, found family little trio situation we're getting with the three of them. Where, you know, Kawa has the way he sees the world, you know, in kind of black and white in terms of, like, wanting to do good and save people. Nago, in, in a certain sense, yes, but also wanting to, like, find, like, you know, worthy, you know, companions and friends that actually care about her. Um, and Ace 
we're not really sure what he's after exactly. I mean, I guess it's got something to do with finding somebody, because he mentioned at the beginning of last episode, we don't follow up much on that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I like how they um, have kind of come together as like a new little like trio to focus on. Um, so in the fight, she of course transforms, uses you know boost and armed hammer, and uh, it's kind of cool. She's using it at first, and then uh, we get to see and she's kicking ass. It's a really well choreographed fight. Um, I mentioned it in my mini review on Superhero Time. Uh, so a really well choreographed fight, and then we see. I didn't know this, but all of them apparently can do the revolve function of the Desire Driver, which makes sense, because all the Desire Drivers can do that, and they all have one. Um, but we get to see her do it for the first time, so it's boost, uh, boost, arm hammer, instead of arm hammer boost. Um, and this time, it makes the hammer bigger, because the hammer's on her legs now, um, or connected to that part of it, whatever. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, boost makes it stronger, makes it bigger, actually. It's kind of cool. Uh, ooh, sorry about the lighting there. Oh, boy. Okay, let me... I can do it here. Uh, okay. Oh, that's awful. Um, ha. That's better. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah. So we get a good fight with that. The hammer's bigger, and she's kicking ass with that. We actually see it open up, and like a jet turbine comes out of it. And she does this really awesome. Yes, she has a grand victory, which is pretty cool. Um, and defeats a bunch of zombies, gets a ton of points. Uh, so we get to the end of the round, they defeat the zombies, and it's revealed that Dapon was in the lowest end of it. So they're cured of their infection, you know, and everything. And uh, Dapon was at the lowest points. Um, and that uh, <coughs> somebody pointed out, I think it was Mary, that if Mary wouldn't have, um, or I'm sorry, if Dapon wouldn't have attacked another player in the previous round and lost points, that he would have been above, uh, I think it was Nago even with her point she got this time, and um, he would have uh, not been eliminated, and she would have instead. So kind of interesting how close that was. But yeah, so he gets eliminated. It's not the same way as we've seen before with um, Genpen and Shiro, where the two of them, their like ID cores were you know cracked and destroyed, and then they were deleted. It's a different little effect when he disappears. He even says, uh, um, I hope uh, some of you losers join me soon, and then he disappears. And... Uh, it says, um, I think Sumuri says at the end that, uh, and it reiterates in text again, which is kind of interesting. Um, so uh, she mentions that if a rider is um, disqualified, they lose their common rider qualifications, so they can't come back. Um, so that's really interesting to me. Um, but yeah, so uh, overall, a really good episode. I like the focus on Neon. I like the focus on her character. She's so far pretty competently written, and I really enjoy that. Um, I like her connection with Kwan and Ace. That's really strong. And overall, she's becoming a pretty well-rounded character, as are most of them other than Mary. I want to get more into him and more into Buffa. Um, but yeah, overall, really good episode. I really enjoyed it. I think they did a really good job with it. Uh, next week looks interesting. It's supposed to be this co-op mission. So um, it's Ace and I want to... No, it's... Sorry. It's Ace and Nago, I think, are on a team. Buffa and Kwa actually... Um, and then I think Mary, his partner, is this, it's another repaint of, uh, Dapon slash Shiro's helmet, instead of being a panda or a, uh, what's it called, um, a polar bear, it's an orange bear helmet, and they call it Punk Jack, like pumpkin, pump, like, like a jack-o'-lantern, um, so really interesting, I don't know what we're doing with that, um, people have a lot of theories that it, uh, the, the, the pictures and stuff, and what it shows, the footage of the character in the show, uh, like in the episode, or the, the preview, that it doesn't seem like maybe it's an actual person transformed. Maybe it's a, a like an NPC that they're just like giving him a partner because there's not enough players left to give him a partner now that Dapon's got eliminated or has been eliminated. Uh, so yeah, so really interesting for the next episode. I'm really excited about to see where things go. Um, but let me know in the comments. Um, and also, well, first on, let me get my score. So I'm gonna give it somewhere around like a nine, nine and a half. I think it was a pretty strong episode. It was nice end of the two-parter little arc there of the zombie survival arc, I guess. A uh, little two-episode arc. Um, did some really good character things, really great dialogue, pushed the story forward. Um, and also we get to see the little, the game master guy at the very end again say, uh, what did he say? Oh, that he's really interested in, in Buffa and Gates and that the faded battle between these rivals will happen soon. So I'm really interested in what that means and what the like game master's role is overall. But anyway, really entertaining episode. But let me know in the comments below what did you guys think of this week's episode of Gates episode four. Uh, 
did you guys really enjoy it? Did you did you did you hate it? Were you in the middle? What were your favorite moments and things you picked up on? I love to hear theories and stuff too in the comments. What you guys think might be going on or might happen going forward. Um, as far as content, pretty soon, uh, I'll probably have um, hoping to have my Down Brothers review up pretty soon as well. It'll probably be around Friday. I'm thinking I'm trying to make Fridays my upload day overall. Um, so uh, look out for that along with this review. Um, I also am getting the Kuga Bluga, Kuga Blue Ray, so I'll have that, and I might do like a sort of review on that, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, let me know, um, like I said, in the comments what you guys think of the episode. Thank you guys, you guys so much for supporting me, subscribing, commenting, liking, sharing, watching the videos. I appreciate all the engagement. It means a lot to me. Um, we're right above like 330, almost 340 something subscribers now, which is insane to me, but thank you guys so much for the support. It means a lot. Um, Hitchens and Homies this week, we're possibly going to have uh, Stickosaurus, who works on uh, Ranger slash Rider helmets, um, on the show, talking about that process, and then I think we're going to segue into like our own favorite Sentai series. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, check that out for Hitchens and Homies. We're getting a lot of good engagement with that. Last week we had uh, uh, Daryl Delphin, Daryl J. Delphin on there, voice actor extraordinaire, talking about some good stuff there. But uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching, subscribing, all that good stuff, but until next time, Stay hooked on heroes.